So what else is there to do when you're out camping in the middle of a wooded area where there's been reports of strange noises? The best thing to do is actually sit and eat cake. So come on, Lee. Bring me cake. <laughs> Look at that! He's giving me the wrong. He's giving me the wrong side. Should have been the other side. <laughs> Tonight, uh, me and Leah are going over to Judy Woods to investigate the area where Gaz, uh, from the Grizzly Gaz uh, channel, had his experience um, of strange noises, uh, baby cries, uh, what sounded like pigs. And then when I was in the tent, I could hear like a, a grunting sort of a pig noise. But in between the pig noises, there were like a, a, a gurgling sort of noise and which has thrown me off from not thinking it's a pig as well because pigs don't make that sort of a noise either kept hearing knocking noises from different directions behind me over here up there and then it sounded like there's a stream just here behind us it sounded like something splashing in there as well but the stream's only so deep so there's no fish topping yeah. out of it sort of thing Hi, I can hear you. We're going to go over and see what we can find out. So I, I'm starting off now getting my stuff together. So what I'm going to do is uh, just show you a bit of what I'll be taking tonight. Uh, as usual, we'll be taking the trail cam. Um, we'll, we'll put that around the camp in, in case there's any uh, noises or anything like lurking around, e even if it's deer, you know, uh, we, we just want to pick up anything because we're trying to get down to the bottom of these sounds and what animal or whatever it could have been because uh, when we went last time, Leo took his uh, thermal imager and he'd picked a neat source up and that's what we're going back to have a look at as well, because uh, this heat source, it sort of like stayed in the same position for a very, very long time. And it looked as though it was crouched behind a tree. Now, we're not sure what it could have been. I mean, it could have been a deer. Um, it could have been a, a big boulder that had been eaten up in the sun all day and uh, it was giving off heat that way. But we want to go over and make sure that there is some at the... Uh, that could have given off some sort of heat source. And if there's not, then we're unsure of what it could be. Uh, so we're going to use this, put it on a tree around there, and uh, probably where we're camping, uh, and we're going to sit quietly and listen for anything that might come along, and then we can pick it up on that. Not only that, we're going to sit there and um, they have here... Uh, what you call parabolics, and uh, you'll put this together 
and it picks up little sounds uh, and amplifies them, almost like a, a dog's hearing. Um, it'll we'll be able to hear something as minute as a, a little rodents running around a, in the area would pick that up. So if it's anything bigger, we'll definitely pick that up and go and look for where uh, the source of this noise comes from. Um, EMF reader. Um, with this, I'm going to show you something when I get to uh, Judy Woods and show you what could possibly set something like this off if you're in an area like that and you're not sure of the area and it's going off all the time. Uh, plenty of lights. Um, what you need when you're out in the woods, especially at night. Decent torches. Um, power banks, uh, in case they're needed, in case we're, our batteries run out on anything. I've actually brought as well uh, a Geiger counter, uh, just in case, you know, like there's something odd around there that it might pick something up. Uh, <clears throat> and the sound recorder, which records over about 20 hours, so we can put that on as soon as we get there, just to leave it, and hopefully it'll pick some of it up. You know, it, it, even if we don't hear it, it might pick it up. So all I need to do now is gather it together, because I've still got some things on charge, gather it together, uh, and then put it in a bag and wait for Lee coming up. So I'll probably see you over at Judy Woods. So we are at the area now where we camped out the other week uh, where Lee caught something with his um, thermal imager in the direction we're both facing now. So what we're going to try and work out is whereabouts it could have been this, whatever it was, this heat source. So what he's doing at the moment is he's got his thermal Im imager and um, he's working at a distance where he saw it, where he saw this heat source from. Can you see anything off at the moment over there? I'm trying to get the right setting where it was on. I'm just going to walk a little in front and um, it might give you a better idea if you see my ink source. So the temperature that evening was quite high. And there's nothing over there, uh, a rock or a, a boulder, I can give off any sort of heat source. It must have been somewhat, somewhat living. Can't, can't really match it up. Can't, uh, it looks different, you see. Well, I didn't realise we were with this far forward. I thought we were more over here. This is the tent. This is where we had one of the uh, tents. That's the other one. I remember stepping out and coming this way because of the tree. And yeah, we're facing your way. Now, further back, there is a, a path, and then it just goes straight down into a dip. Out of curiosity, does it match up over here? Because at one point, I know you were studying looking in that direction. But that's when everyone were grabbing it off you and you were studying. I know Greg would have been looking 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, at that time, um, when when that happened, you were actually studying it right next to the tree where I am. And when they were grabbing it off you, you were actually looking in that direction with it. We did eventually go around to there where you were stood, but I'm sure it was here where you were, we were both look I was looking in that direction and I could have sworn you lot were looking in that direction. Yeah, but when everything calmed down. You carried I, on I looking. Over yeah. There, I over there. Right, okay. That's what's got me. Right, that, I understand that. You know what I mean? Well, walk up to where you were, where you think you were stood at that point. Unless, no, I can't, I can't be because I scanned the torch over there and I couldn't find the thing had gone, but I found the tree. Right, okay. It could have been here with a lease or something. There are a few rocks uh, which could have eaten up. Uh, around here, you can't really see them, but. That one. And then some of the bushes. So if there was anything down here, watching what we were doing up there, and it would have been something with good eyesight, because this was pitch black, you couldn't see in front of you. I mean, there's rocks where I'm stood. Do you see her? Yeah. There's a, there's a rock, there's a boulder sticking out at ground. Here? Was it not this then? Yeah. No, it was here. Popping over the top, here. Yeah. And you were over there, it was popping over the top there. Right. Well, is there any heat away from that at the moment? It's gone. As soon as you think it went. I think it could have been a rabbit. I don't know, but it would No, we would have heard it running off, wouldn't we? Mm. Uh, was it moving? No. All right. So this is me with a thermal image. And as you can see where Lee's pointing with his finger, there was somewhere just there. Oh, and then above. Oh, no, that's... So there was somewhere just there at the side of the tree. Now that is exactly here. So Lee believes I'm stood in the area that this thing was stood itself or crouched down uh, which uh, I'm at the side of the tree at the moment and Lee's over there with his uh, thermal image to see whether it looks the same or similar to what he captured that night when he stood here. And then from what I've seen of the footage of uh, what he saw when what you talk, uh, it looks to me as though it's crates down a little bit on or outside of this tree uh, where I'm stood. At the moment, he's going further back to see whether he can get a better angle on where I stood. Because it could have been this side of the tree or the that were it is behind you now uh, on that side of the tree. Where we are at, at the moment is 
no one walking around. There are a few paths, but there's no one walking these paths at the moment. Uh, a bit of wind blowing through. I'll just wait here until he's finished doing what he's doing. So after we've finished here, and we've had a good look around this area to try and figure out where it was, this heat source was, um, hopefully it's here and we've found out where it is and we know the distance and of uh, where it was and where we were. Uh, but there are no boulders around this area where I am now. Um, so it, it couldn't have heated up from the, the day of being so warm. Uh, see what he's doing. Um, so yeah, it's not a boulder, so we don't know what it is. Uh, we just know there was an heat source around about where I've stood now. Uh, and the distance from here to over there is a good, 25 foot away. So whatever it was, it was watching what we were doing, uh, being a, an animal or um, a deer, maybe, but it was very still as well. And as you know, with deer, they'll just be curious, stay still for a bit and then just carry on if they feel there's no threat to them. I believe myself that it was down here where it could have been. Um, what, where Lee was pointing his camera. Now, looking at the photograph again, because uh, he's still got it on his uh, camera, uh, there's some trees down here that are the same shape of what this thing was behind. Now, when you actually look at where I was stood a minute ago, was right here. And we were thinking it was this tree here. Now, when I look at the photo, it actually looks as though it's further behind and it's in these trees. Now, that would mean if there was some out there watching us, it was up that tree there looking over. Because it seems to match the photo. Because it had the branches in front and the heat was behind the branches. Now I'm not 100% but that's what it looks like. Well here we are all set up at the camp where Grizzly Gaz had his encounter. Uh, we've set this up in case it rains at night, but looking at the clouds, I don't think, I think we're going to have a really good night. Uh, Lee's off in the distance doing a bit of videoing at the moment uh, for his channel. And, um, well, we're, we're, like I said, we're all set up. We're all ready to go. We've got an area over there where we're eventually going to have a fire. We've got there to sit under, like I said, in case it rains. Uh, river, just running along here. Both sides of this area, as you can see, if I walk over here, you'll see there's a slope here, right, going right up to the top, a, a, a few feet, <laughs> quite high up actually. And then on this side, over here, same again. You can see where all the trees behind me going up so we're in a proper valley uh, where hopefully if it does get windy or anything then we'll be fine you know like we, we won't get any wind I mean there was a bit of a wind a minute ago as we were putting the tent up but it seems to have gone and you can see there's an entrance just behind me now where you can get into where we put a, a trail cam and if I walk Again, if I walk around this area, you can uh, see around me and see uh, what it's like here. That wind again is picking up. 
But I think we're quite lucky here. I think we've got a spot where it's not going to hit us. But we have pinned down the event tent. Uh, we don't want it blowing off at night. So we're hoping to spend uh, at least till the sun comes up here. Uh, we've got food, water, tea, coffee. But eventually after we will we'll leave here for a bit while we go around the areas um, and go back to where, <coughs> excuse me, go back to the area where, where we picked up uh, the heat source uh, earlier on uh, and have a look around that area. And here we are on the other side of the camp. Here's Lee. So this is where we're going to get the fire started in a while when it gets a little bit darker because uh, we've been in here most of the afternoon and we've not come across anyone apart from three kids who were playing over uh, and, and who like sort of stopped us and asked us what we were doing uh, but they've disappeared now um, but yeah so, so from this side again you've got this incline here going all the way up there uh, and just below here we've got the ru river running down and someone's left a shopping basket down there in the middle of nowhere I don't know who that has got in here So what we're going to do now is uh, Lee's going to go and get his water uh, and uh, I'm going to break some wood up and uh, get some wood cut up and then we can have a nice fire. So we're fed and watered, we're in here, middle of Judy Woods in dark very dark uh it's only seven o'clock uh we've got a nice fire going there but i think we're going to leave it a bit longer before we head out because uh, um, are you, have you eaten yet lee no not yet well uh, lee, lee's uh I'm gonna have some to eat yeah because he forgot his water and he has to go back to the car <laughs> so uh I've eaten, I'm fed and watered, I'm just waiting for Lee and then we're going to head up out to, into the dark woods and uh, let's see what happens, if anything happens it's quite peaceful here tonight, it's, you know, we, we can hear the river just flowing past uh, the wind's died down, it's, it's so peaceful um, I feel like taking my shoes and socks off and putting my feet up. But I think uh, we're here for a different reason, so see you all in a while. We're heading off down to where uh, we saw the um, body heat from that thermal image. And we're going to see whether we can get it right while it's dark. See whether we can match it up proper to the... Um, footage that Lee took. So this is what I was talking about earlier on, about walking through woods and then all of a sudden your EMF watt meter goes off. As you can see it's going off now. You think why is there any, you know, like, why is there energy around this point where we are? And you look around, we're in the middle of woods. But when you actually look up, I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't. Well, if I shine a torch up, uh, pylons. And that is what it's picking up. So, as I go higher up, it goes off. But as you're walking along, it will eventually just come off because we move away from the pylons. <laughs> so there we go. Oh no, we're still picking them up. And 
walk to me if that's it. So we're away from there. But if I hadn't looked up and seen that there were power lines going over, I could have been looking everywhere thinking, why is there a power source around here? So when you're out in woods and got an EMF, and that happens, always look up to see whether there's a power line going over ahead. Think we're disturbing a few pigeons that keep flying around. I don't know if you could hear that then. I'm hoping we're on a path. Ah, where have we come to now? Doesn't look very good. Uh, ah, yeah, these are them steps that go down. We've been here now looking for this where we could have seen this um, thermal image, and we've come to a dead end. We can't find it. Uh, we thought we'd try during it there, and now we thought, we, you know, we'd come back in the dark when it actually happened to just see whether we could get our bearings to what Lee did see on the camera. But without any luck, we've not seen anything that resembles the picture what he took. So as you can see, we're here now, in front of our fire, keeping us warm. Still been a very quiet night with nothing happening. The wind is now picked up. Um, it's getting a bit chilly, but uh, still okay. So I think it's time for a coffee. So what else is there to do when you're out camping? in the middle of a wooded area where there's been reports of strange noises the best thing to do is actually sit and eat cake so come on Lee bring me cake <laughs> Yeah, that he's giving me the wrong. He's giving me the wrong side. Should have been the other side. <laughs> walnut cake. And you can't be a bit of walnut cake, actually. I can do it. No, nice. It's nice and moist. Moist. <laughs> So we haven't had any strange happenings tonight, but it's been a good night. I mean, is it, is it tapping, no? yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> that was I'm catching you uh, unawares. 
But it's all about getting out there. You know, even though nothing happens, it's getting out there and, and waiting for the unexpected. So your take on what you think this um, thing is, what you caught up on your, what you caught in your uh, thermal camera. <sighs> talking about, you know, like talking about that, but when you were talking to Oliver about it, what did he uh, think it was? Well, I just said to Oliver, I said to him on the phone, I just said, Oliver, you know, let's have two decisions inside the box and outside the box. And obviously outside the box is the paranormal side. So he just said, well, you know, basically he started, he said, well, it's not a deer. You know, it's, he said, but he said, the thing what's getting me is, he said, is it like a big cat? And I said, yeah, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, it does. I know he's going with it. And I said, right, okay. He said, he said, but it's a big mass, that. So I said, well, okay. I said, let's leave it at that. I said, what about the outside of the box on the paranormal side? And he said, well, the thing is with me, because I've seen, you know, a Sasquatch, um, that's the th first thing what comes to mind, really. But when I look at it, I see a Sasquatch shape like a gorilla shape now I don't know if it's me just thinking too over the top but the thing what gets me as well is we were chatting blah 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 and I just for some reason looked at the thermal imaging camera and I don't know just picked it up out of the blue and I not really used it all night until that moment and when I just stood outside the tent moved a little bit further which we've tried to find today but unfortunately we can't we can't match the picture. Um, I just panning around and uh, I just saw it and I thought, that's strange. So I gave Mick a nudge. Mick had a look with his floor and he said, oh, he said, I think it's a dog walk. I can see the dog. So with everybody behind us, like shouting and bawling and whatnot, <laughs> and, you know, I was a bit like, mm, is it, is it not? And we were kind of mixed up. So I thought, well, I'll do a little bit of a recording of it, which is a 46 seconds of it and then uh, everybody was taking the camera off me the thermal imaging camera and uh, everybody kind of parked down and i thought mm, there's something a bit more so i went to the main path and uh, i looked over got the torch in the same direction shone it right over and uh, anybody who's seen me torch knows it's big and uh, when I panned over again, I found the tree, uh, but there was no heat source. So I thought that was strange in itself. So basically, I think if it's the shape of a Sasquatch, and then we've heard noises up here, it doesn't take, you know, two and two to put things together. But... It's just one of them things we'll never really know. I mean, we've been back today, like I said, we spent all day here, really, but we still no answers. But there was definitely something there, and even Oliver said there's a big mass there, there's something there. And a few people have commented on the channel and said you might be onto something there. It, it's strange, <clears throat> it's strange, though, um, like from where I was stood, when I've looked at the 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 footage, you can actually make out the trees. Out. There's something behind the tree. Yeah. Because you can see the shadow of the tree in front of it. Um, I've not seen the footage full. I've seen it. Uh, well, it's still all the time, isn't it? Yeah, it never moves. Never right. moves at all. So at first I was thinking it could have been a boulder because that day it was really hot uh, and the, the stone had... You know, eat it up. Well, we were in well, t-shirts that night, weren't yeah. we? Yeah, we went there, and it didn't. You know, the, the, there's nothing there. There's no stones. There's a, there's a few rocks here and there, but that's it. But there's no big stones like that. But if it's where I thought it were, and where where I was stood, I can imagine it hiding around that tree. Mm. Uh, but I, I, I wouldn't like to say what it is because I, I don't know what it is. All I know is that you picked up that night and eat saw us what was looking at what we were doing. Yeah. I'm not going to say what 
what it is because we, I don't know what it was. So, yeah, and, and like you said about uh, I was looking through my FLIR camera at that time, you were looking in one direction and I thought I was looking in the direction you was looking in. But I wasn't. I saw a dog walker. And I saw someone walking along and then I saw the dog running outside of them. So at that point, I said, oh, it's only a dog walker. And we, you know, put the camera down. Mm. Whereas you carried on, like you said, you walked to that little path and you caught more. And that that's where you catch that. But it's strange how it's just still. And when you do look at the footage, you see an outline of something, what looks like there's two darker eyes. Yeah, there does. There's two darker eyes and a nose by the look of it. Yeah. I mean, you might get a bit more, if you could zoom in a bit more, I don't know if you can or not, you should be able to do. Um, but I've never actually said that. But when Mick said it today, I was thinking that. I thought I could see two eyes and a nose, and Mix picked it up, so it reassures what I was thinking, really. That's what makes it look as though it's something, you know, like something they're watching us. But, yeah, I mean, what would be behind a tree? But we actually reckoned that from whereabouts it was stood, it's a clear path straight to where we had the tents, more or less. So it had a really good view, whatever it was. But what we can see are a straight run. They weren't like dodging in between trees. And we say that, well, we've said it today, that if it had been somebody human, they would have moved further up towards the camp. Because there's plenty of room to do so. And there's plenty of trees to hide behind. Well, the strange thing about that, if it was a human, it, it wouldn't see us. Because we couldn't see it without the thermal yep. imaging. Um, it, it, you know, it's, even if it was a, a deer, you know, it would have been a pretty big deer to be where it was. Uh, and it being so still, you know, it, it would have been there watching us and got fed up and just carried on, you know, like mo moving around. What was that? I heard something then. It's coming from that direction. That was weird. Just heard a strange noise over there. Really strange noise. I'll just sit here a minute quietly and just see if it comes again. Not people, is it? I'm both heard this at the same time though, it's like a... Oh! Yeah, it was. It was yeah. a cut sharp, wasn't it? Like a... Yeah, that was weird. You got your torch? I'm just going to have you got your big torch. But we did hear that cow from here before, didn't we? Yeah. So it might have been an owl. I mean, yeah. Uh, just in the wind. Because we're hearing anyway. noises. It doesn't mean it's we'll press on. anything unusual. Um. But, yeah, going back to the eat sauce, the, if it had been a human, the hands and the face would have been more highlighted. But it was the full body mass all the way through the body. So whatever it was, <laughs> it didn't look like to me it was wearing gloves. Because there's no hands standing out. There was no face standing out. 
I mean, I have actually took a picture and took a video of Mick down there, so you'll be able to compare the difference. Yeah, you can see that I'm wearing a coat. Yeah, you can yeah. see he's wearing a coat, but this is the same body. He's all the way through the body, but hiding behind the tree. So I don't know. It's just another unanswered question, isn't it? Well, I mean, we'll probably never know what it what it was. No. Um, but it's worth coming here and having a look around that area to work out where it could have been on the ground or mm. even in in a tree. And to come over here as well, where where Gaz, started. yeah, where Gaz were camping, because uh, we're in the exact same spot as where Gaz camped, and he had uh, the noises around him and the the what sounded like wood knocks, um, pig noises, uh, baby cries. He had it all. He he, he did. It did happen over a matter of uh, two different occasions. Um, so we, d we were hoping we we'd find our ear summit here with us being here because we, we were more or less doing the same as thing as what he did. You know, he had a he set up camp, he had a campfire. Uh, so that's going to attract anything. We saw wood up, we saw wood up. Well, Mick has saw wood up. So we've definitely sent out the, the campfire smell of the burning and stuff which would have travelled yeah um, we have actually set up a trail camp over here and one over there in the distance uh, and then at the back over there we've got a voice recorder so yeah. that should pick up anything that's it another excellent camp uh really enjoyed it enjoyed uh, the walking around at night as well uh, even though we didn't pick anything up it was still enjoyable to come out here and do what we've done <clears throat> uh, we don't expect uh, results every time we go someplace you know we could be coming here for about three months uh, every night and nothing would happen it's just one of them things uh when you do this sort of work and you get out there and you uh, investigate all these areas, you tend to come along with expectations of finding something. And it, it more or less never happens. But sometimes we're lucky and something does happen. Uh, it's just a, you know, it's that look at the draw. But we're, we're packed away now. We've got our bags ready and we're going to head, head back out. The camp itself is quite good because, uh, like I showed you last time, you know, we've got, we're looking behind me, we've got all this space around us. You know, uh, that's where we actually stayed, where Lee is now in distance. He's just uh, finalising, putting his stuff together. So, again, thanks for coming on this journey. Thanks for being here with us. Uh, Till next time, we'll uh, see you again. Bye.